20 years after terrorists attacked the World Trade Center and the Pentagon, we're now expecting a major announcement from the White House. President Joe Biden plans to withdraw all U.S. forces from Afghanistan by September the 11th of this year, finally ending what's been called our nation's longest war. Right now, approximately 2,500 U.S. troops are still in Afghanistan. Last year, the Trump administration negotiated a deadline with the Taliban to pull U.S. military personnel out in May. That would be next month, of course. Under that deal, the Taliban would enter into peace talks with the Afghan government and commit that Afghanistan is not used as a staging ground for terrorist attacks on the US or its allies. But tomorrow, Biden is expected to announce an extension. Troops will begin returning home before May the 1st, but the full withdrawal would be on the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. How will the Taliban respond to the new deadline? The insurgent group has said if the US fails to abide by the Trump agreement, they are under no obligation to uphold their end of that deal. All told, the U.S. has dumped trillions of dollars into the war. More than 2,000 American personnel died, and at least 100,000 Afghan civilians lost their lives. So where does this leave Afghanistan? Many still worry a U.S. withdrawal will leave an Afghan government in Kabul unable to prevent the Taliban from taking over the country once more. Then again, the Taliban already controls around one in five districts right now despite the U.S. presence. Here to discuss is conflict expert and senior fellow at the Atlantic Council, Emma Ashford. Uh, Emma, thanks so much for coming on the show. Do you welcome this news today that U.S. troops will be gone by September the 11th of this year, or are you concerned it's too soon? No, I, I welcome this news. Um, I, I think it would have perhaps been better if the Biden administration had stuck with the original May uh, date that the Trump administration had negotiated. But I think the September 11th date appears to be a compromise with the Biden administration is in effect saying that they will honor most of the Trump plan and are in some ways tying their own hands by putting such a concrete, significant date on this withdrawal. Yes, it is very concrete. September 11th is not the kind of date people will forget about or not notice if it comes and goes without a full withdrawal. Uh, what does this mean for our commitment to the Afghan government? It can't survive, can it, without US military support? It'll lose in a straight one-on-one -on -one fight with the Taliban, or not? This has always been the problem with the, the US withdrawal from Afghanistan, is that the Afghan government, despite 20 years of trying to build up its armed forces, is still not really capable of defending itself. Um, and so uh, the Trump administration pushed forward with this process to withdraw regardless. The Biden administration appears to be saying, that's not quite good enough. We're going to have the slight amount of extra time to really let us push forward with an Afghan peace process. That is the Afghan government and the Taliban Band, talking to one another and trying to come up with some sort of power sharing agreement. Um, it might work. Um, I, I agree with you that if it just comes down to a military fight, the Afghan government's in a pretty bad place. Um, I also say, though, that that's not necessarily a reason for the U.S. to stay in Afghanistan after all this time. We've, we've done what we could. Yeah, that's a fair point. I mean, uh, it could be an endless commitment if the argument is always, well, if we leave, um, the government will fall. And there's a connected argument, and I want to ask you about that. What do you say to hawks in D.C., where you work, you know the think tank community, you know the foreign policy blob, the hawks who say leaving Afghanistan means throwing Afghan women under the bus, school kids under the bus. That's the argument that's often deployed. What's your response to that one? I mean, I think it's... Uh, it's an argument with which I'm deeply sympathetic, right? I, I am a woman in a very male-dominated field of security studies. I, I applaud the gains that Afghan women have made. But again, that's not the reason that the U.S. went into Afghanistan. It's not even the reason that we stayed there for 20 years. Um, and I think we have to be honest with ourselves about our capacity to enforce the gender norms that we uh, want to see in Afghanistan by using our military to do so. And we also have to be honest about the cost. We are talking not just about spending money, yeah. defense budget dollars in Afghanistan, we're talking about lives. Every year for the last few years, even with a dramatically reduced presence, we've seen um, you know, anywhere from about eight to 10 US service men and women lose their lives. Yeah, and Joe Biden is getting lots of praise from progressives today for announcing or about to, you know, uh, he's about to announce the end of America's longest war. But part of me, I I'm contradicting what I said moments ago, which is, can you get through 9-11 without doing this, a 9-11 anniversary? But part of me wonders, 
do we have to wait and see what actually happens? You know, the devil is in the detail. Time will tell. All of those cliches. Because, Emma, I don't know if you remember this tweet from Joe Biden when he was vice president, put out in 2012, saying, we will leave in 2014. And yet here we are seven years later, Joe Biden is president, not vice president. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think that, that we have been saying this for a long time. Um, but I am, so, as someone who wants to see the U.S. withdraw from Afghanistan, I am somewhat heartened by the notion that they are going to make a very public announcement tomorrow with Joe Biden speaking, that they are pinning it on this incredibly significant, meaningful date. Um, and, and I think, you know, as you said earlier, it would be incredibly difficult for them to sort of punt again when we get to September um, and say, oh, no, we're really just going to push it another six months. I think in many ways, picking this day, you know, you don't have to pick a specific on this day for a, for a military withdrawal. They could have just said September. I think saying we'll be out by September 11th is the Biden administration's way of, of saying we absolutely aren't going to extend it further. So things could change, but but I am I am hopeful that this is an actual yes. withdrawal we're seeing. And there was a lot of reporting during the Obama presidency that Joe Biden was never that keen on the Afghanistan war or staying in Afghanistan and wanted more troops out at the time, uh, but was overruled uh, by Obama, who deferred to the general. So interesting that now he's in charge in his first 100 days. He's doing this. Um, the Afghan war, though, Emma, let's just talk about the war, which we kind of gloss over. It was a disaster, was it not? 20 years, and yet Al Qaeda still exists. The Taliban still controls a bunch of Afghan territory. The drug trade still happens out of Afghanistan big time. Tens of thousands of civilians dead. Uh, several thousand American military personnel dead. I don't know how else to describe the war in Afghanistan other than a disaster. Am I wrong? I mean, this is one of the problems with uh, ending the war in Afghanistan is that no president, no, no policymaker very rationally wants to be blamed for failing to win in Afghanistan. And I think it's it would be apparent for a number of years now that there is no way to, to win in Afghanistan. Um, that said, you know, I, I would say that the war met its original objectives and it met them back in 2003. Right. We did succeed in breaking the Taliban at that time. We did succeed in smashing Al Qaeda's position in the country. Al Qaeda is now much weaker. Um, you know, everything since then, however, has been this very different conflict with these very strange goals. And it has not been a success. So, you know, if I were talking to Joe Biden tonight and telling him what to say in his speech tomorrow, I would tell him, focus on that. Focus on the early successes. We succeeded in what we went in to do after the 9-11 attacks. Um, and getting out now is just accepting that the, the goals we added after sort of 2002, yeah. 2003 were just unrealistic. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason why historians have called Afghanistan the graveyard of empires. Um, and I wish George Bush and co had thought a little bit more about what they were doing in 2001. Um, Emma Ashford, thank you so much for your time tonight. I appreciate it. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.